Today I'm going to demonstrate how to implement logging with Timber. Timber is a flexible logging library for Android. I'm going to start with a new project, but this could easily be implemented on any existing Android project with just a tiny bit of work. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is add Timber to your build.gradle file and then refresh your Gradle dependencies. Once the refresh is complete, we'll need to add a little bit of Timber initialization code to your application's on create method. This is the timber.plant method, and we plant something called a debug tree. So think of the plant method as something like where you're planting a tree. Kind of witty. This method allows you to set up the type of, type of logger that you'd like. Timber ships with something called the debug tree that provides all the basic facilities that we're very used to in the common android.log framework. So now that we've initialized Timber, let's go ahead and start using it. Timber has all the same logging levels that you're already used to with android.log, such as timber.i, timber.v, timber.d, timber.w, timber.e, timber.wtf. There is one gotcha though. The default exception logging in Android places the exception as the last parameter in the log call. In Timber, when logging exceptions, you will need to provide the exception as the first parameter to the, parameter to the call. When you log with Timber, you'll also notice that you do not have to provide a tag in any of the logging calls. This is because Timber provides a tag for you. The tag is the file name of where you are logging from. In this log, you can see that we're logging the text hello and it is prefixed with d slash main activity, which means debug in the main activity. If I were to log with timber.v, as you can see with goodbye here, the value is v slash main activity, which shows that this is a verbose log in the main activity. Now, usually around now, the question arises of, well, what do I want to do if I'm relogging in release mode? I don't want to show all the debug logs and verbose and information, all that stuff. I just kind of want to show warnings and errors and WTFs and so forth. How do I do that? There's a couple ways to do this. One is you could use a build variant system to create different versions of your application for debug and release and use different application objects to implement that. You can watch the build variant episodes to see how to set that up and then initialize a release or debug uh, tree depending upon which application you're in. But for today, we're gonna to go with number two, which is actually to use the build config debug dot build constant. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do this with the build debug, build config dot debug for brevity today. So let's go back to your application class. What you're gonna to wanna to do is insert a conditional on the build config dot debug constant. If we're in debug, we'll wanna use the debug tree like this. Now, if you're in a release build, you're going to want to implement some type of different logging logic. And here's how you can go about doing this. You're going to go ahead and write your own logger by extending Timber's tree abstract class, just like this. Now, this may look like a lot of code, but it's not really doing anything different than what the debug class is doing, except writing a couple pieces of logic. What happens initially is we only want the release tree to show warnings, errors, and WTF values. So again, I've extended the tree class and I overrode the is loggable method. This method is used to help decide whether or not a certain priority of log should be logged or not. So it helps you determine if a debug or verbose or information should be logged or not. So here we're just filtering out everything except warnings, errors, and WPF, WTFs. Everything else is ignored. To set this up, we're gonna to wanna to do something real easily inside the application class. We're just gonna add an else statement like this. And so we'll now plant the release tree if we're in the release build. Now, if you're running a debug, you get all of your logs like you're used to seeing, which is great. This is perfect. This is exactly what you want. But now if you're in release, you only get the ones that are important to you, maybe the warnings and errors that you really need to log so you can see them uh, inside of your release version. Now let's talk a little bit about some advanced usage of Timber. Let's assume that you want to log all caught exceptions to a crash logging framework like Crashalytics. You'd want to do this inside the release build, not inside the debug build. And so we'd want to use the release tree. So first you'd set up in the application, you'd have to initialize your crash framework like we're doing here. And then in the release tree, we want to add a little bit of code that would log that, that exception that was thrown to the crash framework like this. All we're going to do is check that our priority is error. So we have logged an error and you could do this for warnings too. We're just doing it for errors. So if it is a warning in this case, we want to log it to our Crashlytics framework. Now you can see that it's commented out. Now it depends if you're using Crashlytics, your own custom version, uh, maybe a different tool, but this is how you would actually say, Hey, I have a, an exception that I would like to log and you can log it to a different in the framework. And what this allows you to do is be able to track your caught exceptions to see what's happening inside of your app from a remote perspective. This is very useful because now you're able to determine and perform some type of an analysis on these exceptions to determine if there's a certain risk area that you need to address inside of your application. Now let's take this a step further. Let's assume maybe you would like to extend the debug 
tag to include the line number. Now this is very useful for debugging because you can see where a particular log statement took place in your code during development. If you have a very long file or you have a lot of things going on and you're logging all kinds of things, having a line number on each one of those tags is gonna be great. And here's how you're gonna go ahead and do that. Now back inside of your application, we're going to still plant the debug tree, but this time we're actually gonna open up the class a little bit and we're gonna override inline the create stack element tag method. And what we'll do is we'll call back into the create stack element tag method, get the tag. Again, this is the tag that shows up on the screen, the same one that I showed you before that said V slash uh, main activity or D slash main activity. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add a colon and then the line number to it. So instead of it saying D slash main activity, uh, it would say D slash main activity colon whatever the line number is where that occurred as you are seeing here. Now from every time when you start performing any type of logging inside of your debug environment, you'll now have the line numbers associated with it, which is very useful during development and testing if you're providing your testers with debug uh, builds. I hope that helps. Until next time.